I don't have a cat kindergarten, and I don't have monumental dick jokes. <laughs> but I do have some really on-point topicality, I'm sorry, in advance. Uh, I'm here tonight to talk about national monuments, their role in our nation's move to preserve what we have that's ancient, and uh, don't call them national parks. You'll understand why by the end. Um, and I want to take a moment and acknowledge that a lot of really dark things have happened in the U.S.'s history, and that if I make jokes about them, it doesn't mean that I think that the various flavors of genocide that our country has sampled over the years, like some kind of messed up platter, are good. Uh, I think that remembering the fucked up parts of history is important. It's part of why this is so important to do. But I'm going to tell the jokes anyway. <laughs> so... Let's frame this in the present context. This is Bears Ears. It's a, national, it's a national monument in southeast Utah. It's a sacred site for the local Native American groups, and it's recently been shrunk by 85% by our current president. Um, thank you. And you may have seen this in the news and wondered why this is a big deal. Uh, federal lands are for use by all kinds of different groups, and why should it particularly matter that this gets, gets shrunk? Um, and I hope, in, I, I hope I can provide some framing context for, for that tonight. If I could have given this talk yesterday, maybe, hopefully all of you voted, but if you didn't, shame on you, and also this maybe explains why I think that's important. Um, and I think that it's important to, to frame how we think about history and who that history refers to. So, back to California. Many of you may have been to this particular view. This is in Yosemite Valley as you come out of the tunnel driving in. Uh, California has a lot of monumental as fuck nature. You can drive there. It takes a long time because of traffic, but you can do it. And Yosemite Valley in particular helped create the idea of a national park, not just for the United States, but for the world in general. It was set aside as protected land by Abraham Lincoln in 1864 in an even more contentious period in American history and uh, eventually became a national park significantly later, in part due to state mismanagement. Um, so I'd like to give Yosemite a great thanks for uh, helping point out why we need federal regulation of states when they fuck shit up. <laughs> um, during the 1880s, okay, so like back, back up a step. Yosemite, you can like look at this and recognize, wow, this is great and unique in the world. Those walls are 3,000 feet tall. It's, it's hard to get a sense of scale, even when you're right up close to them. Um, and during the 1880s, we had a different kind of problem for the first time. After basically mugging Mexico for half of our country in the Mexican-American War, after buying a bunch of the rest from France without really knowing what was in it, which is a story for another day, during the 1880s, an increasing number of westward settlers that had covered areas like this in Chaco Canyon that were essentially long abandoned archaeological ruins of the sort you'd see in Rome or Greece or anywhere else in the, the old world, that had these amazing like, finds in them. And so, of course, they uh, broke those down for saleable parts, uh, because when you moved out west and you're starving and eating your you know, friend's dead kids, um, <laughs> you need money. So they sold lots of pots and lots of the, the gems they found associated with that. And, and as the, the scientific community in the US was expanding, this led to a push for protecting these sites, which eventually reached culmination in 1906, when Teddy Roosevelt, shown here with John Muir in Yosemite, this motherfucker liked to hike, uh, signed the Antiquities Act, which is a four-paragraph act and empowers the president to designate protected monuments, which are then national monuments, and get protected around cultural or ecological features of interest with a, a, a minimal kind of environment around them. Um, and the first three selected were Devil's Tower in Wyoming, which is fucking awesome, and also sacred to most of the neighboring groups that live nearby before we got there, shot most of them, and then stole it. Um, and, uh, uh, like, you know, there's, there's two others, both of which are also, like, long-standing archaeological ruins. Um, and I just like to say as a side note, this is known as Montezuma's Tower. Montezuma was an Aztec emperor who the Spaniards killed in the 1460s. Um, this had nothing to do with Montezuma. It's basically the equivalent of a high-rise apartment building, and if we'd learned lessons from that earlier, we'd probably all be a lot happier with regards to rent. <laughs> um, but one thing that these national monuments came to symbolize is the, the idea that the federal government can do constructive things that'll make everyone's life better together. And especially during the Depression, after the creation of the National Park Service, 
this became kind of a mascot for the overall federal push to like get Americans all together and pushing in the same direction. And a lot of really wonderful things happened as a result of that. But also some fucked up things. Like why is Hot Springs, which is like 23 square kilometers, a national park, but Grand Staircase, which is 4,000 in the same size as Glacier up in Montana, a national monument. Like, the original idea was that the parks are like these geographic areas covering areas of wide interest, and the monuments are these very specific things, but the boundary's gotten kind of like hazy over the years. And there, there have been like a, a lot of like legal fights over the last century or so with regards to this, this uh, power discrepancy where Congress had delegated to the president the idea that he could designate, and unfortunately it's always been a he, we'll fix it someday, national monuments, but then Congress had to designate national parks. And then sometimes when Congress gets upset with the president, like here in 1943, when FDR designated Jackson Hole, Congress was like, no, you can't have it, that's a stupid monument. So they folded it into Grand Teton National Park. So it's still protected, but now Congress gets to take credit. Um, <laughs> And, and this political football has been like continued down the years. And, and you can see, this is a photo gallery of all the presidents since the Antiquities Act was passed and the number of national monuments each of them has created. And you might notice something in the bottom right. <laughs> I've taken the liberty of color coding these presidents by political party using their generally accepted nomenclature and Clinton and Obama both made a fuckload of national monuments. Not that H, not that like W and like Trump are that far behind, but they're clearly not matching up. You might wonder why. Uh, I will cite as an example um, the 2006 Valor in the Pacific National Monument with a bunch of sites of historical interest to World War II. So most of these are in Oahu, in Hawaii. Uh, three sunken battleships, some housing units, uh, mooring docks, thank you. And some of them are in incredibly remote sites in the Aleutian Islands. There's literally like one site where a bomber crashed once, but since no one goes there, it's still perfectly preserved. And then one of them is this site in California, which maybe some of you have heard of, called the Tool Lake Internment Campsite. I've been there. Uh, there's uh, not a lot. There's a barbed wire fence, and inside it there's the kind of ruins of a bunch of buildings from the 40s that were set up to house 18,000 prisoners of Japanese descent, most of which were American citizens, most of which were conscientious objectors to the war or in turn for some sort of political dissent like, hey, why did you put my dad in a concentration camp? Fucked up. Tool Lake is nominally a national monument, and since this thing was created in 2006 and split off into its own monument, uh, but Manzanar on the 395 down in the Owens River Valley is not a national monument, it's a historic site, even though it has this amazing historical exhibit, and yes, you should definitely visit, including the names of everyone we locked up for a long ass time in the middle of a windy, dusty, frigid desert in the middle of nowhere. And I think that, like, to me, this is, is really the point of national monuments. Note that it's a historic site, not a monument doing it. Is that we've established this edifice to, to remember this important thing that we did. Kind of, no, not kind of, an incredibly messed up thing. And now we've partially made reparations. And I want to like highlight this with the 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 uh, another national monument, which is right next to the Tool Lake site. This is part of Lava Beds National Monument. It's a, a a wall of pictographs, which I don't know if you can see here. So I encourage you to do it in person. Um, up in Northern California, that's been there for hundreds of years, um, where like people would come along what was originally an extremely large glacial lake and like you know etch their their writings into the wall. And like in, as a part of the same national monument. There's this thing called Captain Jack Stronghold in this like shield volcano lava site where a bunch of Modoc tribes people fought the US Army to a standstill for more than a year of essentially wintertime trench warfare in the 1870s. This shit's awesome. And the fact that our government fucked up this stuff in the first place, but then thought it was worth remembering is super important. And if you just like weird parties, <laughs> another mile from that site, is another part of Lava Beds National Monument with these like amazing lava tube caves where people used to throw underground ice skating rink parties back in like the 1920s. <laughs> and you can drive to all of these and pay not very much money to see them, which is great. And that, to me, brings us back to Bears Ears here, right? So we have these sites that our government has protected over the years, often 
because of historical relevance from some people that don't live there anymore because our government shot them or imprisoned them for four years in massive civil rights violations. But the point is, we preserve them. And the US has done a bunch of messed up things over the years that should surprise no one. But the fact that we have at least some institutional capacity to own up to that, to recognize it and to say, this is important not to forget, and it's us, and let's keep it, is one of the, the, the most powerful acts that we collectively as a country, I'm sorry, but it's, it, we have responsibility for it, like can do. And so uh, today, on the Tuesday of your primary election, I hope that you voted. And I think that things like this with Bears Ears, where the, the original monument protecting this area was shrunk by 85% and opened for oil and gas drilling, uh, potentially leading to geological destabilization of the actual mountains in question, are an extremely important example of why this is important now and not just as a, as a historical reference point. So I would like to raise a glass to everything worth remembering in the United States, the good things, the bad things, the both things, may we never forget them, and may we never let anyone else forget them either. Cheers. Yeah.